Hoop Dreams, the podcast, an Unlearning Network production. Today we got a special guest, yep. one of Chicago's very own. Uh, I guess today is actually the first, the first woman on the Hoop Dreams podcast. Yep. She is a three-time FIBA gold medalist, silver gold medalist at the 2015 Pan Am Games, a 2016 FIBA three-on-three bronze medalist, played not at one, but two legendary universities, Kentucky and Ohio State, a part of the SEC all-tournament team her freshman year, SEC all-defensive team her sophomore year, and she played for the WNBA Chicago's die her home yeah, team yeah. and the Minnesota Lynx. Straight out of Chicago. Please welcome Lene Harper to the Hoop Drink Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Will Gates, and that's my dog in the building. Thank you so, so much for having me. I feel so honored and grateful to be here. First lady. <laughs> We're going to put you on a t shirt. That's right. First lady, first lady, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah, Chicago's own, love it. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here with you guys. Um, you guys have an amazing story. So I think this one is really special because we're all, you know, right from Chicago. So um, I'm excited to be here. So we all, we always open up the show with asking the person, you know, when was the first time they seen Hoop Dreams and did it, and did it impact them in any type of way? Uh, you being so young, we like, man, I don't know if she didn't seen it. Like, we, you know, we like, we like, well, we still got to have on the show, man. Just because she's from Chicago, man. And she the first lady. So tell us when you first saw it. And did you have to watch it again? Be truthful. You know, a really good friend of mine, Canadian guy, uh-huh. told me about the movie. And it was so funny because I'm from Chicago. And I'm like, how did I know about this movie? And I'm 26. Right. I looked it up and I'm like, 1994. <laughs> I wasn't born yet, yeah. but you know, maybe I should yeah. watch it. <laughs> I wasn't born yet. And so right. I'm watching a movie and I'm texting my best friend and I'm like, have you seen Hoop Dreams? He was like, uh, yeah, nay, like, you haven't? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, what have I been doing? But I literally enjoyed the entire movie, like watched it straight through. And it was very inspirational, you know, just from the intro and just seeing the city and how it looks so different now with me growing up to back then. I'm like, wow, this is really Chicago and how you guys were playing outside on the outdoor courts. You know, you don't see that much now. Yep. So I think that was really special to see that, you know, that toughness and what mm-hmm. you guys brought to the game. So I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Well, thank you, Lene. We really appreciate that. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Well, Lene, I, I want to ask you, because like you said earlier, we are from Chicago. So you got to let me know what side are you from? <laughs> you know what? I, sometimes I get confused because sometimes depending on who I'm talking to, I say <laughs> the South side or I'll say the East side. I don't know why I do that. But when I was in high school, I grew up on the East side, not too far from 70, oh, okay. 70 30 and Yates. And then before high school, okay. I was on the South side. So I, I pick and choose depending on who I'm talking to, but I claim the East side. So that's what's up. I claim the East side. side yeah. <laughs> So since you're from the east side over that way, tell us the Lene Harper story. Give us like, what's what's Chicago to you? That's a good question. Um, Chicago to me, really, and my favorite word is just toughness. You know, I always believe that if you can make it out of Chicago, you can literally make it anywhere in life. No matter if you're in China, if you're somewhere else, somewhere in the U.S., People from Chicago, especially athletes, go go through a lot. You know, you have a dream and you see what you want to do when you get older, not realizing that it's just not point A to point B. You know, you got all these obstacles, detours and things that you have to go through. Um, And so for me, I didn't have a lot of opportunities growing up with basketball. You know, it wasn't a lot of girl teams. You know, it was just pretty much about the boys. 
And I had to find my way through to, you know, get to where I am today. Chicago is definitely for me, it's about toughness. And I think that's one thing that I carried with me once I, you know, left here. Yes. Thick skin. Yeah. Thick skin we thick Chicagoans skin. have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So tell us about your uh, brothers and sisters. All right. So I am the only child. Um, my family is what? really, really small. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. No, you should start out and say, I am the spoiled child. <laughs> that I am. <laughs> uh, that's right. I am that's the right. You are child. the spoiled child. I'm the only yes. child. That's right. My mother is the only child. My grandmother, wow. brother passed away before I was what? born. So she so she's technically the only child. He had no kids. And so my great grandparents passed away yeah, yeah. 2014, 2015. So my family is really small. Like really small. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I don't I'm have so any, sorry to hear about your grandparents passing. You no, know, it's okay. I don't have any like immediate like uncles and aunties, but you know, you meet people along the way and you know, that becomes mm -hmm. your family. But when I was around the age of five or six, um, I grew up going to Avalon Park on eighty third and I just saw the guys outside playing basketball. And at that time, my mom had me in dancing. So I was doing like ballet and tap and jazz and all of that. And it was cool. Right. But I was so much bigger than all of the other girls. I don't know why, because I'm not that tall now. It <laughs> <laughs> was early, but I just would right. go to the courts and watch the guys play ball outside. And I used to cry when my mom had to pick me up. I'm like, I want to just stay out here and watch. Right. And then eventually I would wow. just get out there. And I would just start playing with them. And it wasn't any teams for girls back then. So I literally grew up playing basketball, small fry with only boys. My high, my grade school, I went to Robert A. Black on 92nd and Jeffrey, all boys. I played with uh, Jabari Parker. Mm. So we played together from fifth to eighth. Yep. And then right around that time, I started playing like AAU basketball um, for mm. Lady Fire, Mac Urban Fire. Um, and then that's when I started mm -hmm. actually playing with girls. But me playing with the guys really made me tougher. So when I got to playing with the with the girls, they're like, man, this girl is, you know, she kind of tough, but I was still young. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of mm. where I started. And I, I also played um, like a league at the Dalton, the Dalton Park District when I was younger. Like that was kind of mm -hmm. a, a big mm -hmm. league. And I was the only girl there. That's way, way out, out there. there. So I was driving, yeah. Off, yeah. driving yeah. over. So I got some good exposure when I was a when I was a kid, but it was tough. You know, I think it was my yeah. eighth grade year. We played at CVS High School, and mm. I had to. You know, I'm the only girl, so I had to go to a separate bathroom by myself, change. You know, no one there with me, and that was kind of tough. It was scary a little bit because I'm like, I'm young. I don't know where I'm at. This is mm -hmm. high school. Um, but right. I've just learned so much, you know, with, with basketball and I got to Whitney Young. That's where I wanted to go. And, uh, we had a dynasty there. We had a dynasty. Um, my junior year, we ended up winning state. We went undefeated. And so throughout my four mm. years there, I placed first, second, third, and fourth downstate. We went downstate every year, but I placed each, you know, each place in my junior year. Man. Yeah, my, my freshman and sophomore year, we kept losing to the same team. We just we just couldn't beat them. And my junior year, um, they changed the rules, I guess. Hold on, what 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 team was that? Bowling Brook. Bowling Brook uh, High School. Really? So really? <laughs> we could not beat them at all for whatever reason. And so IHSA changed the rules. And I guess they were tired of the top teams being downstate. So they said, we're going to make y'all play before state. Mm -hmm. So we get there and we went into four overtime. Wow. Four overtime. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yes. Yes. The game probably ran to like midnight. I mean, it hey, was. Y'all play, play almost two games. Almost two games. <laughs> y'all play two full games. Yeah, and I got hurt the, the, the day before that. I got hurt. Um, and I had a really, really bad sprained ankle. I mean, it was like the size of like a grapefruit and mm. I really couldn't walk. Wow. And my coach was like, 
I care about your health, but I need you for this game. You know how coaches are when they like they need you to play. Right. Um, so I, I ended up playing the whole game, literally, with my ankle being like that. But it was worth it. You know, wow. you know, fighting for my teammates, fighting for my coaches and my family, and just to see that we won that game, even if we didn't get a chance to win state, that was like a championship for us. You know, when you just talking right now, like I'm just picturing Love and basketball, Sanaa Lakin. <laughs> like, I'm just picturing you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That was you. Like, really. Can't you hear us saying, I'm a ball. I'm a ball. Yeah, I'm like, a ball <laughs> Right. Look, <laughs> Lene, I'm just like, wait a minute. This girl fell in love with the game by watching the guys yes. Yes. and I being did. out there on the court, outdoors, just, and then having the confidence to get yep. out there and start playing with them. Yeah. And they were tough yep, on me. Yep, they showed yep. me no mercy. It wasn't like, oh, this is a girl. We're going to take it easy. Like, they was knocking me down. Right. But they were also picking me up at the same time. So I appreciated that, you know, from the young boys. Because that wow. really helped me, you know. like, And they mm -hmm. knew anytime I came in the gym, they like, oh, you know, Harper really won the ball. So That Harper kid, huh? <laughs> and you know what's so crazy? How I got that name. Um, I, it was my junior year, and I had just got my first invitation for USA. And my high school coach, she handed me the, the mm -hmm. envelope. And I'm like, what is this? She's like, you got invited to try out. I'm like, no way. In my mind, I'm like, I'm not that good to be coming here with the best players. And I get there, it's 100 and maybe 65, 170 girls trying out. Oh. It's only like three or four courts. That's it. And so it's what? four four judges, 170 girls, four courts. They could only pick 12 players. And I was one of the 12. Wow. And my what? mouth, wow. yes. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yep, I was one of the 12. I mean, I'm just. <laughs> That's a hoop dream if I ain't never seen one. Out of 187 yeah, people and they only picking 12. And you were one of them? And what they do is they have the list of players on a door outside. So if your name isn't on the list, you're done. If you're if you made it to the next round, you know, you just come into the gym and you complete the, you know, the next round. The last round, they have you sitting in the gym and they announce the team by your last name in front of everybody. Oh, wow. So if you know your last name start with A and they go straight to C. You know, right. it's, it's, it's over with. How many games did you have to play in that in that trial? It was like three days, so we probably played around. I would have loved, I would have loved to see it, been inside your mind to see was your what, what was your mindset like? Did you go in it's like I'm gonna be a Chicago pit bull? I'm making this damn team. You know what? That's exactly that's very true. Like normally players, and I did this before. It's like when you get there, it's like I'm about to drop thirty. And I'm going to let these coaches know that I can score. But I'm like, it's too many great players here. They know we can score. Mm -hmm. And so that's where that Chicago toughness came out. And I was just like, I got to be a dog. You know, I got to be a dog on I defense. I got to be a dog. I got to be tough on mm -hmm. offense. You know, I got to be a great yeah. teammate. I got to be whatever they need me to be. And that, you know, fast forward into now, I was able to make seven USA teams, you know, and, yes. and play. So yes, it's, not six. Yes, let's do the LeBron. Not three, <laughs> not four, not five, <laughs> not six, seven. seven, seven of them things. Yep, seven. What? Yep, and then my senior year. So back to my junior year, I got the name Rami Manuel. He came to our high school. And he said, "You're that Harper kid." And I'm like, "How do you know? Who, like, how do you know who I am? <laughs> I'm just a kid from the east side." And ever since the that mayor. day, okay. the mayor, people would just say, aren't you that Harper kid? So it just kind of stuck with me. I'm like, let me just use that as my name. Dope. Like, that Harper kid. I'm oh, gonna just use it. Yes. Trademark me. Brand it. Let's Brand go. It. I, I need to. I T -H -K. Need to <laughs> T -H -K. You better do it. You better do I it. Need to. You better do it. So, so Harper kid. Harper kids, you growing up on the east side, but you well traveled in your basketball, oh, yes. you know, statements that you make in every place you're going. I know you said you didn't do a lot of outside playing, but where, where did you pick up that tough skill from? Because there, there's 
different gyms that you go to? Or did you get some hardcore coming in when you were coming up? Honestly, I think it was just me being at Avalon Park playing against those guys outside because I went there every day after school. So I went to Avalon from the age of five until 13 when I graduated. So that's where they, you know, Damn. the students go after school until, you know, your parents can pick you up. Mm -hmm. And I was there every day. I'm like, all right, I finished my homework. I'm trying to get on the court. That was me every day. Right. And I would eat <laughs> yeah, I, I remember Avalon Park. Yeah, Avalon. I remember it was it was tight over there, too, though. Yeah, it was, it it was, was tight, tight over there. <laughs> it was tight. And then the guys would be like, oh, you know, you can't shoot. So I'm like, come on, let's bet 50 cent. And I just would. I just kept when I kept racking up mm -hmm. 50 cent, you know, I'm young. So, you know, 50 cent to me, <laughs> you go to the corner store and get, you, you know, a lot. So That's right. That's right. Hey, remember we was at Joe's and we used to play Get Like Me? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Make the toss, toss the quarters up. <laughs> and a little lunch money. And we used it all right going to lunch money. That's it. Man, back then you could get four bags of chips for a dollar. You know, that was the good old days. <laughs> That's right. So we got your nickname, man. You the Harper kid. Meeting the mayor. You know, but his thing that I know, meeting the mayor, I mean, first of all, I mean, you're doing amazing things. And his, and his was even more amazing. You're still 26. You got so much to go. But being a girl playing in Chicago, I know, I know you said you was getting it in with the guys at the court. Where did you find your place in the game and you said you know what i'm gonna help elevate this girl what was that moment for you when you said you know what yeah I, i'm playing with the guys i can get down with them but i i can really contribute to the women's game on a whole nother level when was that moment for you um i think so as far as like my confidence i don't think i really got confidence until like my junior year but i want to say like my eighth grade year i don't remember how old i was maybe six to eighth Antonio Davis started a um a AAU team for his you know his daughter plays basketball as well, um, but it was so far yes. it was in Naperville, you know at the time my mom you mm -hmm. know it was me and my mom so it's hard to get transportation out there she has to work so yeah. um I was so fortunate that they were able to you know meet us halfway, you know if we drive to a certain wow. time. and that really you know changed everything for me. You know, they really looked out mm. for us. And that's when I realized, like, man, I can really change the game. And when we were getting our jerseys, his number at the time was 33 when he played, I think, for the Bulls. And I mm -hmm. love rebounding. To this day, mm -hmm. I love rebounding. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know, you have this gift of rebounding, and I want to, you know, I want you to wear my number. And it made me feel so special to know, like, a coach is really, you know, wow. believing in me. And it's like, this yeah. is the number you wore, you know, in the pros. And so ever since that moment, um, it just stuck with me. And once I got to high school, I started as a freshman. And that wasn't easy either. You know, it was hard. It's a lot of pressure on you. But uh, my coach was very yeah. hard on me, you know, very like yeah. how the coaches was on y'all. <laughs> that was just like that on me. Was your coach uh, Corey Irvin? Corey Irvin. That was my coach. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, we yes, know about yes. Corey Irvin, but <laughs> yeah. she like a she like a she like a Dorothy Gators, but a two point oh Dorothy Gators. Yeah, she was she was. I mean, <laughs> but she made us tough, and she helped. You know, she got us to where we needed to in those moments. You know, when we were at the second mm -hmm. overtime of my junior year, you know, we prepared for that moment. You know, all season long, and we were just so tough. And I think that carried me. Even through college, I mean, because I, I had the opportunity to go to any college that I wanted to, but I didn't want to go to a, you know, a top five university. I wanted to go to a university where hmm. there were good resources for me, but I wanted to help, you know, contribute and build a program up. You know, all, you know, we got mm. the UConn, the Tennessees, the Notre Dames, everybody, you know, wants to go there. But I'm like, I want to go somewhere else to try to make a change. Right. You know, and, and do something different. And uh, I think that's why I, I really chose Kentucky, you know, because they were, you know, top 10. And my freshman right. year, they was in the middle of the pack. They was like, you know, middle of the pack. And we had eight All Americans, including myself, my freshman year. And uh, we had a really good team, you know. On that one team? 
on that one team, we had eight mm-hmm. All Americans. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. Dang. Yeah. I bet y'all practices was like shit. It was so hard. I think I questioned myself a few times. Like, is this really what I want to do? Do I do I really want? To? <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. I think that's every athlete's come to realization moment. Like, you know what? Everybody good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody good. Damn. Right. You know, so I want I want to jump back into your your Whitney Young history because it is a lot of things that a lot of people don't know about Whitney Young. First of all, it's a selective enrollment school. Yep. So you ain't just getting in Whitney Young because you say I want to go to Whitney Young. And your mama wants you to go there. She like, no, you going to Whitney Young. I said, okay, mom. What was that like? Because, I mean, not only do you have dominance on the court, but you have to be dominant in the classroom. Yeah, you, How did you balance that? Whitney Young was, it was kind of hard. So my, my eighth grade year, I tested really well in math. And so I had to take an um, mm. entry exam mm. at Whitney Young. Okay. And I, I aced it. So they bumped me straight from algebra to trigonometry. And it honestly was the worst decision ever. I would have been mad. I struggled. I struggled the whole four years when it came to math because when I tested, I didn't get a chance to start from the beginning. And I, if I can go right. back, I probably would have just been like, let me take it slow. You know, this is high school. This isn't grade school. Uh-huh. But mm-hmm. It was really hard. You know, you got to stay on top of it. It challenged, it challenged you early, though. It challenged you early, yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah. But it really did shape me and help me, you know, for college. It really did. Like, she always Mm. made sure that for every home game or every game in general, we had to dress up. We had to dress up. It was no exceptions. I mean, I I didn't have the grades or the the resources to go there or anything like that. But when I always used to be on a bus and drive past the school and stuff like that, you'd be like, man, it's a nice school to go to. They had off-campus lunch wheel. We did. We sure did have off campus lunch. It's like what? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, I mean that, that that school would definitely change your mindset about the outlook of what's you know what's going to happen after you get out of high school. You know what I'm saying? When you drive over there, particularly when you when you go down this one street, there's like a bunch of townhomes on one on both sides of the street. It kind of used to always remind me of like the Cosby Show. I was like, man, these kids over here, man, living the Bill Cosby life, you know, going to school up the street. I mean, it, it was it was just amazing. But 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 you went to a school that, again, great academics, great athletics, but when the young got some superstars on all spectrums. I mean, you got my man Q Rich, Jaleel Okafor, yeah. Marcus Jordan went there, obviously. First Lady Michelle Obama. I mean, knowing all of this history, what what was your mindset thinking? Like, I gotta perform on this level. I gotta con- I gotta stay in this. What was your mindset? You know, my freshman year, I didn't know it was the history was that deep. You know, when you go on a Whitney Young. They have Quentin Richardson and all those players, their banners in the gym. Mm. But then as I got older, like my sophomore year, my junior year, I'm like, oh, this is like, you know, this is a real deal. You know, the alumni yeah. for Whitney Young is huge. And then I didn't realize until maybe my sophomore year, junior year, that Michelle Obama had went there. And I was like, wow. <laughs> I'm like, mm. she probably walked the same halls that I <laughs> that I'm walking. That's right. That's right. So it's just amazing to see that, you know, and now when I'm older, you know, and I just hear people say, oh, yeah, I went to Whitney Young. I'm like, oh, you a dolphin, you know, so it's just uh-huh. see, it's a lot of history <laughs> from there. And I'm just happy that I took advantage of that opportunity, you know, um, mm-hmm. you know, just trying to be a better person and athlete as much as I can, you know, so. Do you go back and visit there? I do sometimes, uh, not recently, but before I got mm-hmm. out of college, I would go back and, you know, be a practice player sometimes for the girls basketball mm-hmm. team. And I was good because, yeah. you know, they, you know, when you're in high school, you think you got it. <laughs> so, yeah, I know, I, know, I know them young girls thought that thought that was so cool. You coming back like being a practice player, like Lene Harper is practicing with us, yo. Yeah, I love giving back. I love like 
helping with the community and being with kids. So anytime I get a chance to just help in some way, like I'm, I'm always going to be there for sure. So I love like, you know, going back there and talking to the girls. And when they look at me like, you really play, you really play in a WNBA? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know, and people see that, but mm. they don't really know how hard it is. You know, it's, yeah. it's, mm -hmm. it's so hard mm -hmm. when you have a dream from me being a kid. So, well, why don't you, why don't you take a moment and, and, and just for all of our listeners, let them know, tell, tell them what it takes to get to that level, the commitment, the time, yep. the energy, the focus. Explain that to them. Don't do it because your mom and them forcing you to do it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Then you're not going to have fun with it. You know what I'm saying? The game started out for me and William, fun. We loved it. We stayed outside playing basketball to the lights really went off. They never came. They never went off. They stayed on. And it was that love for us. But for you, give us that. Honestly, it, it was just, I just had this dream. In my mind, it's like, I want to be in the WNBA. And I see, you know, Lisa Leslie, and Candace Parker, and Katie Smith, all these, you know, amazing, great athletes. And I'm like, this is where I want to be, you know? And so... Mm -hmm. I just, I had my mind stayed on it. I was so focused. Like I, I really didn't do much. I didn't, I didn't go out much when I was in high school. Like I really was a gym rat. That's how much I wanted it. And when I got to college, I think that's when reality hit for me. You know, cause when you go to, mm. you, from eighth grade, you go to high school, you know, starting four years, you win state, you know, you get a couple USA medals. I'm like, oh, okay, that's not so bad. Life is good. And then when I get to college, mm. I'm like, oh no, this is hard. You know, everybody is good. And you know what they always tell you when, when you get to college? That shit in high school don't matter. It don't matter. You probably was the best dude on your team in high school. You come up here, bro, it's eight dude, all good. Three of them is sharing your position. Now, what you going to do in practice? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, no, I'm going to fight this dude. <laughs> yeah, he ain't getting my spot. And not only that, sometimes when you at school, you could be hosting your replacement. They bringing in new recruits on you. You you hosting your replacement. You know you like you you know you tell your replacement, come on here. This is this is where you need to be. I mean, my should tell my coaches, man, I ain't hosting no guards. Give me the big dude. I take them around, but I ain't hosting no guards. That's so true. I never thought about that. Like, where am I gonna host my replacement? No, nah, now if I'm a senior, I don't care. But I ain't hosting. Nah. No, not my freshman, sophomore, junior year. No, I'm not. <laughs> so that's a good one. That that Chicago toughness and mindset made you excel at the next level, and then so forth. Like mm -hmm. you, at every level you went to, just think about it. You you always like I guess you it's just in you. You know what I'm saying? When you're faced with a situation like you was at that, with all trying out for that for that team. You faced with that situation, you Chicago kids can make it anywhere. You can make it. You can really make it anywhere. Yeah, you have had. A, I mean, at a young age, girl. <laughs> yeah, you'd have had an accomplished a career. If I talk to any young girl today, I'm gonna be like, "Yo, go Google Lene Harper." <laughs> won't you do that, Will? Absolutely. I, I won't say. I, won't, I mean, absolutely. You, you and Cappy Pond Dexter. Absolutely. Well, AG, don't leave out your girl. Um, went to Marshall with you, Kim. Oh, Kim she Willis. Was, she oh, was tough. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. We called her Lady Jordan. Now, Lene, I want I want to ask you this because I mean, gosh, your recruiting process. You're McDonald's All American. What was that like? And and I know you had more than just Kentucky on your right. list. Give us your list. And how did you how did you manage and break that down to get to Kentucky? You know, it's so funny when I was watching the movie, the scene where you were dumping all your college papers. I felt a mm. sign of like, whoo, I know his feeling. You know, he just dumped them on because you know, you get all those letters and you overwhelmed and they saying the same thing. And mm -hmm. you know, I really didn't have, you know, that much help. I had my high school coach, I had Corey, and she was very helpful in the process. But, you know, as a coach, it's only so much that you can, you know, do. You have other players that you're trying to help. Mm -hmm. She might be still trying to understand the process as well. I think my my last two years, we had a lot of D1 athletes, you know, coming out. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, trying to figure out what school to go to. 
it's hard. You know, they're all selling you yeah. this fantasy. And yeah. it's like, how do I yeah. pick five schools? You know, so my mom was more so, you know, focused on the academics part. You know, she never got a chance to go to mm -hmm. college. She didn't get that experience because she ended up having me. So her biggest thing was like, I just want you to get your your education, you know. And so for me, I'm like, OK, well, let me look at the basketball part. So I went mm -hmm. on a visits and my biggest thing is I, I, I vibe off energy, you know, so I, I can mm -hmm. pick up the energy of the team, you know, of the coach staff, of just the entire weekend. I'm like, mm, this is okay, but it doesn't feel too right. Mm. And um, my top five was ooh, Kentucky, Ohio State, Tennessee, Miami, and man, it was one more. I can't even remember. I don't know if it was the- man, You walked away from Miami? Ooh. Man, you know what? Miami was nice. And I'm sorry, it was UCLA. UCLA was in my top five, and I mm. really wanted to go there. Ooh. I really mm. wanted to go there. But back then, it was no network. So there was no way for my family to watch the games. They didn't have any games coming to the Midwest. And I don't get homesick, mm. mm -hmm. but I do like being, you know, close enough to my family. And so that was the yeah. biggest thing for me. Uh, Tennessee was cool, you know, but I just didn't have that it factor, you know, in my gut. Miami, I loved it. I mean, Katie Meyer, she's an amazing mm. coach, amazing coach. But in my mind, mm. I'm like, this Miami, you know, outside of basketball. So I'm like, let me go somewhere where yeah. I can try to focus. And um, I end up choosing Kentucky. A lot of distractions in Miami. A lot of distractions. And my teammate, so her name is Janae Thompson. She graduated from Whitney Young a year before me. We put on the team together. She went to Kentucky. And so I'm like, I'll have somebody mm. there with me as well. We play the oh, same, that, makes sense. that fast tempo type of tough basketball. And I end up going there. And uh, I mean, everything was honestly amazing at Kentucky, you know, um, as far as the resources, how they treated the athletes there. It was just amazing. But around my sophomore year, um, it was a lot going on. I lost my, my great grandmother. Um, I got an opportunity to go to USA Trials. We had a lot of team issues, you know, um, mm. and it was unfortunate because our team chemistry was amazing. And the year that I left. I'm, a, I'm assuming you don't want to tell us about them team issues. We love to know one of them team issues. <laughs> oh, it, it probably was just people not like it. <laughs> you know what? I'll say this. Eight of us left that year. Eight players wow. left that year. So that's wow. how serious it was. It was. It wasn't just a... Wow oh, I'm not playing, I'm not getting no minutes, I'm going to just go to another school, you know. It was some really, really tough issues, you know, that affected the entire team. You got to give us a little bit more than that, Lene, because, you know, that 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 was that was part of one of our <laughs> questions for you, you know, because we're like, man, you you killing that Kentucky, so why would you leave to go to Ohio State? So give, give us something on that. The atmosphere wasn't conducive to a positive outlook? Yeah, like, so when I got there, you know, the, the coaches, they tell you, this is what we need you to do. They say this dream. But it wasn't happening according to the conversation that we had. And I said, you know what? Okay, it's not mm. working out, but let me try to stick it out. You know, and so I tried to stick it out. And, you know, me having a conversation with the coaches, well, the head coach, we weren't on the same page. He's a great guy, great guy. Mm. But as far as the coach, we weren't on the same page. So the things that we disagreed upon he gave the okay to for another player. And I'm like, you know, well, that doesn't make sense. You know, like, I don't give you no problem. Right. I do everything I need to do. And so even though we disagreed, I still went to do what I wanted to do because I felt like it was best for my, you know, my future. And that was USA yeah. Basketball. I got invited and I'm like, this is an opportunity for me to go. He said, well, we have summer workouts. And I was like, Summer workouts are going to always be here. Really? I need to go to USA. And so, and that's just one of many, you know, situations that we had. And so I left. Right. And when I came back, not in the starting lineup my junior year, starting a freshman. And mm. right after that moment, uh, and I made the team that year with USA. Mm. And I, I called my mom and I said, you know what? I don't think this is the place. You know, this is not for me. 
And she was like, are you sure? I said, no, I'm sure. I said, I'm ready to go somewhere else. And by that mm, time, absolutely. you know, I could have went to a school and a lot of people don't know this. A lot of people do not know this. I could have transferred to pretty much any school that was interested in, me. you know, scholarship, you know, full ride, whatever. Mm. But before I chose Kentucky, it was between Kentucky and Ohio State. I mean, it was neck and neck. The only difference was the style of play. So I chose Kentucky. So when okay. I wanted to transfer, I said, oh, Ohio State for sure. I went on my visit. We had a transfer from North Carolina and Duke. Top 20 players. So I'm like, we about to do something nice. Our starting five was nice. Mm. But they didn't have a scholarship until the following semester. They had already, the rules is you can only have 15. They had already had 15. I still decided to go there. So I had to take a loan out for a semester to go there as a regular student mm. until, as, yeah. So I, I got a chance to see both sides. Wow. How the regular students get treated and then how star athletes get treated at a university like Ohio State. I can just imagine. I went to get my books and they said, yeah, your bill is, you know. I said, Jesus, this is how much, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So wait, were you still, were you practicing with the team too? So I was still practicing, but more so it was like I, I came on as a walk-on. I came on as a walk-on. Mm -hmm. It was just a semester mm -hmm. left. And then once the semester ended, the seniors graduated and I was able to come on as, you know, as a scholarship athlete. So for that semester, it wasn't, you know, too, too bad. But, um. That's actually in that time how I ended up getting my dog because I was really depressed and I went through a lot of anxiety with not mm -hmm. playing. I was taking like mm -hmm. five online classes and I really couldn't go anywhere, you know. And so right. still dealing with that, I got her and she really, you know, brought me into a better light, you know, in the in the world. So Really? Yeah. How did you get her? So I drove to Dayton. I was looking up dogs, and my mom was like, you're not bringing no dog home. You don't have time to take care of it. And I just got her anyway. <laughs> Mama said, you ain't, like, you just drove. Like, I think I think I need a dog. Let me find me a dog. Dry to Dayton. Get her. Mama said, you ain't bringing no dog home. And I home. flew right home to Chicago and brought her home to the house. <laughs> <laughs> and now they best friends. You know, I'm, I'm I'm glad you I'm glad you brought that up, particularly with the mental health and the depression component, because it's, it's huge now. Athletes are coming out more talking about how, you know, things that they held in that they no longer have to hold in uh, for particularly for, for the athletes that are listening. It, explain to them what life really was without basketball in it. I mean, people don't understand yeah. how difficult that is. I mean, that season when I was injured, I, I didn't know what to do. Yeah, You're used to practicing every day. You're used to being with your teammates. And for me, up and from high school to college, it was all about physical toughness. I knew that if I would play mm. as hard as I can, beat my opponent and give everything I got, that I would be okay. And yeah. I didn't think about the game as far as the mental side until I got out of college. But when I was by mm. myself, I realized how tough it was mentally, you know, how much your mind affects you, you know, on and off the court. And I just took it day by day. I gained like maybe 15, 20 pounds. And I think wow. right then mm -hmm. when I was mm -hmm. able to play, I changed my diet. Around that time, my grandmother got diagnosed with breast cancer. And I think that's when I changed my diet up. And I was able to lose my, my 15 mm. pounds and I was doing really good. And, you know, by that time the season started and I was able to play. And then by this time, I'm mentally stressing myself out about the W. I'm like, I only got, you know, right. three semesters to play. You know, I'm, I'm checking the, the, the draft stock. I'm, I'm checking them every week and I'm seeing my name. I'm not seeing my name, but it really affected my play. But at some point in time, I realized mm. like it's out of my control. I can only do what I can right. do. And so I started, believe it or not, I started as the four at Ohio State. We played a four, four guards out a post in on offense, but on defense, I was guarding the fours. So I was guarding players that was actually, you know, banging me inside. Banging you, yeah. 
So, you know, that kind of hurt me on the flip side when it came to my draft process because scouts are like, well, yeah. what is she? Is she a guard or is she a forward? But my coach had me playing the one through the four, just pretty much whatever they needed me to be. And so right. as a kid, you know, I'm like, my mom is like, oh, we can't wait to you get drafted and you go out this draft. You know, when you're dreaming and you're seeing what you want to do. And it's mm-hmm. like a week before mm-hmm. the draft. And she's like, do you want to have a draft party? I said, nah, my feeling, I don't feel too good about it. I said, I'd rather just watch it with you and my grandmother. And draft day came mm. and I was so nervous. I'm sitting there watching the draft. And I see my name, you know, we see next available. You know, I'm seeing my name. I'm seeing mm-hmm. the players get drafted. I kid you not. To me, it felt like the draft was 10 minutes. Wow. It wow. went from first round to third round. And my name wasn't called at all. And I just sat there and felt like. Oh. What was that moment? What was that moment like for you, though? Because, I mean, you know, like, like for, for doing this interview, I went back and saw all of like. I went and watched your 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 highlights, your mm-hmm. tapes, and I did. I saw you playing out of position. I saw you um, even how they changed your game up a little bit. You became this defensive yeah. ace. <laughs> I mean, you're getting steals. How how do you think that type of style hurt your chances of getting into the WNBA as well? I think it hurt me because in my mind, I knew the type of players I were I was playing with. You know, so I'm playing with some great players and I know their roles. So for me, it's like I need to find a role that fits for me, that satisfies for me, but also it works within the team. You know, so we have an amazing player, you know, who went top five in the draft. She averages 20 to 25 attempts a game. Right. And we have our post player. Post players got to get their touches. You know, so that's about 10, 12. And then we got a shooter. Shooters need their touches. You know, so then that leaves me. And I'm like, where am I going to fit in? So I'm like, if I can average three, four steals a game, that's about three, four opportunities to, you know, get a shot up. You know, if I get a couple rebounds, you know, or still me playing my offensive game, it made me a well-rounded player. But it hurt me on the back end Mm -hmm. because it's like the scouts are like, well, is she good at one position? You know, so when the draft came, Mm -hmm. I end up having uh, a chance to, you know, talk to some coaches and they seem interested. But man, it felt like my heart was literally shattered after the draft. I'm like, this mm. is what I've been working for towards since I was a kid and I didn't get there. And I was just so devastated. Who came out of your draft class with you? Who, who was in that draft class? Oh, you got um, Diamond and Shields, Gabby Williams. Mm-hmm. Diamond wow. and Shields. I don't know. Maybe Asia Wilson. I think Asia Wilson. Wow. Kelsey Mitchell. Um, Alicia Gr- yes. Alicia Gray, I think she came out the year before. We really had some heavy hitters, you know. Um, and I was sitting there watching the draft like any other player would. I'm like, man, how this player, you know, get drafted and I didn't. But I think it, it worked out how it was supposed to. And that following day, I went to the gym. That following day, I went to the gym and I said, you know, what? I'm going to just get back to really? the next day. I said, it ain't over. I, I wow. got some time. And Chicago called me the next day. I said, hey, mm. you know, how you feel about coming to Chicago? Was it some uh, people that got drafted uh, ahead of you that you felt like, damn, I'm I'm kind of, I'm, I feel I'm better than her? For sure. I did. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, you know, I think that was in my mind for a while, but at some point I just really had to understand that everything happens for a reason. And if I would have got drafted that year, it's a possibility that I wouldn't have made the team. And Cause if I would have got drafted wow. by say, I'm going to throw Indiana out there. They could have possibly had 12 spots already locked in. Well, I went to Chicago and they had a mm. spot left. And so wow. I had to be out with seven guards. It was seven what? guards trying out for one spot. I need to know them seven guards. I, do you know them? Give me, give me two or three. Give me just. I know you was a pit bull. Like we for the fight. I know the the guard that was there. Her name was, and this is a funny story. Her name was Michaela Epps. She was one of my good, good best friends at Kentucky. We played together. She got drafted the year before mm-hmm. to Chicago, 
And so, you know, when they called me, they said, you know, it's a training camp. Well, this is the roster. And I'm like, man, it's my homie, you know, but I got to come in here and I got to go for blood. You know, I, I'm trying to get a spot, you know, so we went, we went head to head. We went head to head. Mm. And that's my homie. You know, mm. So it wasn't nothing personal, but it's just like, this is, this is also my dream too, just like it's yours, you know, <laughs> this my dream. So it it, it, it going to be either my dream or your dream. And, and mm -hmm. I, I'm telling you, it's going to be my dream. Two of us coming in here, one of us walking out of here. That's right. That's right. And we had our first home game, and we all had to enter out of the tunnel individually for our intros. And just to hear my name and the fans, mm -hmm. I just was like, wow. She made it, baby. She lived the hoop dream. Baby. That's right. That's she right. Did it. And listen, and, and, I, and I don't want you to, because I, I want you to share that moment with us, but we want to do something with you real quick. So hold on to that thought because we want to we want to get that moment. But that was like that first day when they called your name out. But we got something called halftime. We gonna we gonna hit you with some questions, and we want to see what you thinking. So here we go. The best food in Chicago is it the hot dog or the pizza? Pizza for sure. <laughs> Pizza, for sure. <laughs> Your favorite pizza joint. Oh, I knew that it is. That. Uh, I was really having this conversation with my mom the other day, and it's so hard. They're so hard, but I, I got to go with margaritas. Really? Oh, margaritas. Really? 79th. 79th Street. That's got to be the best piece of how long? Me. How long have margaritas been there? Do you know? Of? Oh, man. They've been there for at, at least since I was a kid. Cause my mom used to get it for me. You know, we would have like pizza movie nights maybe mm -hmm. a few times out the month. And I'm like, I mean, I love Home Run In, Beggars, Giordano's. I mean, I love it all. Right. But Italian fiesta, but margaritas just hit different in my soul when I eat it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to margaritas on 79th. Yeah. 79th. Your 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 top five favorite rappers or artists. From Chicago or just in general? Oh, we go we got you gotta hit Chicago first. Chicago? We're going to test your history on this one. See what you know about your hometown. Yeah. Wow. You know what? I don't really listen to rap. Okay. So I really don't know much about Chicago rap music. The besides, Chicago rap scene. I'm, I'm a fan of Kanye West. You know, I like his music back then. Graduation was out. I think that was his hottest mm -hmm. album out back then. Mm -hmm. um, but my top five artists in general um mm -hmm. i love kendrick lamar he's my number one all okay. right he's my number one that's them young folks ag they, they go for that kendrick lamar i love yeah kendrick i mean lamar. I, th I thought you would i thought you would you know chicago somebody would have put you up on some psycho drama crucial conflict do a die she ain't she didn't even say the man that she didn't even say the man that donated money to the Chicago Comment. public school system. What happened to Chance the rapper? He just he don't get no love. You know what? I love Chance. I love Chance. <laughs> Acid Rap. Yeah. Acid Rap was his 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 to me his his best album. I love Acid Rap. Yeah, yeah. I love Acid Rap. That I like sure. that in Coloring Book. I like Coloring Book too. Yeah. I like Chance. I like Chance though. Your favorite sneaker to play in, where you feel like, oh, I'm feeling, I'm feel ooh, bouncy today. Kyrie's for sure. I'm feeling good with some Kyrie's on. From fresh ones out the box. Fresh out the box. That's the only shoe that I can wear to play in, and it it, it doesn't give me any problems. I've tried PGs, KDs, Jordan. I mean, I've tried them all, and Kyrie's are the only shoes that just makes my feet just feel comfortable. I can move, I can, you know, make sharp turns, I can, you know, change the directions. Wow. What's your favorite Kyrie, though? Which model? Ooh, that's tough. That's tough. What is the name of the most recent ones? I can't think. He's on the he's on the fives now. Fives now. I think fives are my 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 most it's probably my favorite ones. I thought you was gonna say them them hybrids he threw out a few years ago where he blended them all in together. I like the hybrids. I did, but I like. I'm big on um, I'm big on the strap. 
So, yeah, I got to go with Kyrie. I got to go with Kyrie. Now I'm about to hit you with a hit you with a hard one. A uh, hard one, yeah. Your top five WNBA players of all time. Ooh, this is tough. <laughs> you 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 hit me with a good one now. Top five. Oh yes. Top five. Top five. My favorite player, hands down, is Katie Smith. So she in my top five. For sure. Really? Top five. She, All right. I, I, she was real tough. Hey, and, I'm, you know, me coming up, I was a real tough player. So I think that's what kind of drew me to her game. You know, and she had a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. You know, hit you off the dribble. Mm-hmm. You know, hit you with the three. You know, get to the bucket. Um, and, hit a, and, do a, and hit you with a no look, too. Hit you with a no look. Oh, I'm stuck between... Cynthia Cooper and Cheryl Swoops. I'm trying to see which one. What you know about Damn. Coop? What you know about Coop? I think I'm about to go with Cynthia. <laughs> She's early, early WNBA. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Lene? I'm going to have to. We, we used to call Cheryl Cooper Lady Jordan. She was the Michael She was the Michael Jordan lady of the league. She nice. Even though Cynthia Cooper was. Whew. Cynthia Cooper might. I mean, they, yeah. many consider Sharon Miller the greatest yeah, I was gonna women's say player. Girl, yeah. But yeah. Coop, Coop, Coop like right there. Yeah, she right Coop there. like right there. And I'm going to have to bring it down to now, Diana Taurasi, man. She is like female mm. Kobe to me. I mean, mm. uh, I got to say Maya Moore. I got to. I got to add Maya in that, that five. I got to. Man, we miss. You talking about missing her game? We we miss her game. I want to throw a name at you and see what you say. I want to throw a name at you. Uh oh, Jewel Lloyd. Oh, hey, have you been watching her this season? She has. I mean, she's at the peak of her game. I used to be her Sunday school teacher. Really? <laughs> That's how old he is. <laughs> she she is a bucket getter. We I, we played against each other when I was in high school. She was at Niles mm-hmm. West, I think. We played against each other. Yep, Niles West. Battle. But she is, she got it. Jewel she Lloyd. is tough. You know, she's tough. So here we are. You go undrafted. Get the call to the Chicago Sky. They bring you in. You got to knock your girl out to get yours. So that first time you saw that Chicago Sky uniform. What were your feelings? I was just like, like, this is it. I'm looking at the jersey and I'm Mm. putting it on and I'm like, I'm really here. Like, in this moment. And it's like, nobody could take this moment from me. You know, and that's right. I think if I can't, I think we played Atlanta Dream for our first home game. And I'll never forget my first, my first bucket scored. I drove to the basket. I I drove left, did like a little, you know, a little up and under scoop layup. And it went in, and I'm just like, oh, my gosh. I just scored, you know, against some of the best (laughs) players in the league, you know. And in that moment, I had to snap out of it. Like, I am a, you know, I'm a professional, too, you know. But some moments we played, we played my, you know, we played Minnesota. Maya Moore is coming down in transition, and I'm starstruck. I'm like, this is Maya Moore. I'm guarding her, but I'm like, I'm stuck. And I'm like, please just don't embarrass me in my mind. But she ended up smacking a three in my face. She smacked it all net in my face. And I was like. <laughs> she said, welcome to the league, Rook. <laughs> exactly. It's not done over here. <laughs> yeah, but it was, an, it was an amazing feeling to know that I think 2018 that year, I was the only undrafted rookie to make that season. To and make that wow. season. Look at that. I wow. left there. Like you just got, you just. You just got hoop dreams after hoop dreams, kid. Man, but it's it, but you know what? Damn. People see that and they think like it's easy. You know, like they think it's oh man, she just made it to the league and you know, but it's hard. You know, like now you got to go overseas. You know, because you don't make the you know enough yep. pay to you know be able to survive while you're home. And so I, I went. And to we definitely want to talk. We definitely that, that's definitely one of our topics we want to talk to you about is the pay. Uh, disparities. You know what I'm saying? Now, for me, me being a rookie, right, 
and I'm getting my first check, I'm like, I'm mm-hmm. cool. This is this is more money that I've you know I've had in college, and you know, here you go, mama. Go go go. Put this in the bank. Yeah, you know, and they give you a place to stay. You know, so for me, I'm like, they give us a place to stay. They pay for our flights. We travel. We get per diem for food. So I'm mm-hmm. as long as I try to save and not go too crazy, I think I'm okay. Right. You know, just try to save. Yeah. But I know for vets, players that's been in the league who's paid their dues, I understand that, you know, it's mm-hmm. time that they want more, you know. And so now we have to go overseas and totally different lifestyle. You're really on your own out there. You know, it's like <laughs> you try to stick together with the, the Americans, but it's really, really a business out there. You know, one minute you're there, the next minute you're gone. And Damn. my first experience, and before I get to that, you know, trying to find an agent is hard. You know, if you're not like a top five player in the draft, you know, top 10, it's hard to find a good agent, you know, a good representation. You got me an agent, and my first experience overseas was, it wasn't too good. Was your first agent experience okay? Um, in the beginning, he was very okay. supportive. He was very active. But once I left the country, it was a disaster. Like mm. I was in the, I was on a plane, you know, we were ready to take off, but for some reason we were sitting on the plane for four hours. So Dang. we finally took off off the runway, but I missed my connecting flight because we were in the runway. So I ended up landing in Turkey and I'm trying to talk to the people. They don't speak any English. I'm calling my agent. He is nowhere to be found. Literally, what? Like I'm calling him. I'm calling my mom, and she's calling him. So I finally get him on the phone. I'm like, "Hey, I'm trying to get to my destination. There's some issues. Can you help me?" So we got past that. I get to Israel, and we get to the the building. I kid you not, looked like an abandoned building, and there was nothing there. It was nothing what? in the apartment. Like we had no furniture, what? no te- like anything. We had no Wi-Fi. It was mold in the bathrooms. It was. You sure you was at the right place, Lene? I was at the right place. I was at the right wow. place. Wow. Take me to where we play the ball games at. Right. And normally, you're going to be like, no, this ain't, you know, but I stuck it out. You know, and we, you know. Really? One moment I walked into the kitchen and I kid you not, it was like 30 roaches. They just came mm. out the walls. And I was literally about to Damn. lose my mind. You know, and we talked to them like, hey, we can't stay here. And they helped us out. But it was like, I really stuck with that. You know, I didn't say too much. I didn't complain. Right. You know, I just tried to stick to it on the court. You know, fast forward, we had a break. Mm. I came home. They were trying to manipulate my contract. So at this point, my agent pretty much was like, you know what? I don't want to be an agent no more. This is just too much. Wow. And so at this point, I'm in Israel and I'm like, okay. So I found a way to get me another job in Israel, and I was playing my best basketball. I mean, I was averaging. Hold up. What do you mean you found another way to get a job in Israel? You don't know nobody. You don't speak the language. I don't speak the language, but I was. That Chicago, that Chicago survival shit will kick like, in. I need your like, help. You know, I need your help. I'm trying to figure out how your agent told you, I don't want to be an agent anymore. You're agent no more. What is, what is that? I'm stuck there. I'm I'm still trying to process that. When you say I'm an agent, you're like, hey, man, I trust you. Or, True. I trust you. And to this day, I have no idea where he is. Like, wow. wow. I don't even know, you know? And so I get to Israel. I'm playing my best basketball. And we won a few games. They pulled me aside. They said, hey, Hart, how you doing? I'm doing good. She's like crying. I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, oh, yeah, we got to let you go. I'm like, let me go. I'm like, what like you, you playing your best basketball? Yeah, well, I'm playing my best basketball. They let me go. So I go back to the apartment. I call my mom. Somebody's knocking on the door. It was the player that they were replacing me with that same day. What? That same day. Was it an Amer? It was an American. Check this out. It was a good friend of mine, Amanda Thompson, that went to Whitney Young High School. Play wow. graduated. That's my girl. AT, that's like my big sis. Went to Oklahoma. Went to Oklahoma. She said, sis, I told them I wasn't taking this job because it was you there. 
I said, you know, it's all love. I said, it's a part of business. You know, it ain't no, you know, I understand. She was like, but, you know, I'm here. And she was like, you can stay here as long as you want. You know, if, if you need to stay here until you can find another gig. And I mean, she was so helpful for her to be like a veteran, you know, professional mm -hmm. athlete, for her to just help me and take yep. me under her wing. It was great. And so I ended up going she home. She played for the Atlanta Dream, right? She did, yep. She played for the Atlanta yeah. Dream. That's my good sis. Yeah, so. What did they say to you, though? What did they say to you? I mean, I know they just like, um. They just your, said you got to let Your contract you know. is over. Now, did they still owe you money? I mean, did they honor the money portion? My contract was guaranteed. They did not pay me to this day. Wow. Wow. Boy, I done heard, I done heard some overseas stories, some nightmares people done told me. Man, it was, you know, and so then I went home. I re-signed with Chicago, you know, and I mean, I took it up a notch, you know, from Israel. And yeah. uh, I knew I knew I wasn't going to make that roster. I just I just felt it. I, I didn't feel like I yeah. would make it. Um, and I didn't. Even though you went hard, though, you went hard and you went full in. Or did you kind of hold back because you had that doubt? Well, you know, when they have the draft, you know, they have players that's in town come make an appearance. And I'm there and I'm mm -hmm. watching the draft. And they drafted a guard in the second round who had just won a championship of the NCAA tournament. And when I saw that, I'm like, it's, you know, it's a wrap. It's a wrap for yeah. me. And I knew that. Uh, but I still went to camp. This was before camp even started. So I went to right. camp with a chip on my shoulder and I played my best basketball, but it didn't work out, you know. So I kept grinding. I kept grinding it out. Yeah. I ended up being selected for a three on three team through the Seattle Storm. There's, they started their mm. first professional three on three team. Um, and I did that for the summer. And I'm like, hmm. You know, I want to play in the league, but I'm like, maybe this is a good opportunity. By this point, I got a new agent, young guy from Texas. I mean, he was so energetic, you know, all of that. How did you get him? So he had been reaching out to me for a while and I was kind of like, no, I'm cool. You know, I'm going to just stay over here. Um, mm -hmm. But I was like, you know what? I needed an agent while I was over there and I ended up signing with him and he got me that gig. And then he was able to get me a gig to play Euro League the fall mm. of 2019 in Latvia. So so he's showing you a little something. So he's showing me something, right? So I get there and my contract is 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 guaranteed. Um we lose our first couple of games and the whole oh, dynamic shit. of everything just shifted. It went from I'm playing 30, you know, minutes to 18, 17. They're not really telling me when practice is. I'm asking for the schedule. Really? They're like, oh, you can come if you want. So they're not talking to my agent. He was like, yeah, well, you know, we're not really winning any games, so they want to make a change. I was like, well, I'm okay if you want to make a change, but my contract guaranteed, so you got to pay me, you know, pay me my money. That's right. That's right. They don't want to. So I stayed as long as I could, you know, but it just got <laughs> so bad. <laughs> I'm like, you know mm -hmm. what? I'm going to leave. But I said in a contract, a termination contract, I need a date by the, to get the amount of money that I'm settling for. But if I don't, then I need to get the full contract. I never get any mm. of my money to this day. <laughs> what? Wow. From there neither? Wow. From wow. there neither. I never got a wow. dime. Wow. Never got a dime. So 2020 comes, right? And at this point, I'm like, man, is this really what the professional life is like? Like, is this really what I signed up for at this point, you know? But I'm still, mm -hmm. you know, applying pressure. I right. get invited to, you know, go to a camp for three on three for the Olympics. That's going to be held mm. this year in Tokyo. Mm. And just to mm -hmm. go to that training camp, you know, it was just like, man, maybe this is why everything is happening. I was supposed to be. So that was a great experience. And then I ended up signing a training camp contract with Minnesota last year. I signed mm. with them. We had a virtual training camp because of COVID. So we were all in our homes, but you had to do everything through Zoom. So I got a call and an amazing coach, amazing head coach. She said, Nay, you know, you know, you're great. You know, it sucks that we didn't get a chance to actually get, you know, on the court, but we can only keep 12 players, you know, so. You know, I got to, you know, I got to give you, I got to cut you. 
I was like, thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. And in that moment, I think I just broke down. And I'm like, you know what? Mm. I don't know if basketball, mm. it hit me with that mm. question. Like, do I still want to hoop? Do I still want to do it? Because like, it's getting too, too hard. I keep yeah. getting to where I need to get to and it just keep knocking me down. So at that point, I'm like, man, I've been graduated from 2018 and this is my third year and I just keep yeah. getting cut. I, I, I stayed the course. Um, and at that point, I had no offers for overseas. I'm like, that don't make sense. It's like, I should right, have some right, offer. Right. It may not be a lot of money, but yeah. I should have something. And my agent said, oh, Europe is closed. There's no, there's no overseas season. I'm like, players keep signing every day. So I end up firing him and mm-hmm. I end up signing with another agent. And I'm still with him to this day. And it's probably the best decision I've ever made. He was able to get me a job <laughs> in Italy, top league. I played there. Top league. Top league. I was able to sign with Minnesota again, you know, this now, past Wait a minute. How, how did you find this new guy? So when I played in Israel, he represented some players that I knew. And in the midst of okay. me trying to get that job when my first agent left, I made mm. relationships with uh, Israeli agents. And so mm. when I reached out to him, I said, hey, I'm looking for an agent. He said, this mm-hmm. is my partner, American. His name is Mike. And I said, okay. So I'll talk to him. And we talked. And it just happened to work out. And so I made it through a full season in Italy. You know, then I came back. I was what? able to sign with Minnesota this past February. We got we got, we got to give her the gap. Uh, we, uh, Absolutely. She made it a full Absolutely. Season. Full season. And got her money. And got all her money. And got all my money. <laughs> and so now... I get to Minnesota, I'm, I'm, I'm playing some good basketball, and then um, they didn't have enough for 12. So now we got a new CBA. You know, players are making 220 max now, you know, for one season. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, now some teams don't have enough in their salary to hold 12 players. So it was just like, you know, we can only sign you to a temporary contract. And I was like, you know, of course I'll take the opportunity to start the season off. So I started the season off um, and I just got home like uh, maybe a few weeks ago. And so I've just been training, you know, just sticking with it. So that's where mm-hmm. I'm at now. And then in between all of that, um, I do have my own not for profit. And so I, when I'm not, you know, working out, I do that. Hold on. Lene, let me ask you this. Are you are you still on call for I mean, can can any WNBA team call you up right now? Yeah, any moment. So I'm still working out every day to this day. Tomorrow I'm Damn. going to Massachusetts to play in a three-on-three tournament. It's a USA Basketball National uh, three-on-three tournament. And uh, it's like a tournament. I'm pretty sure it's players all over the country coming to play. And um, it's right. kind of like an opportunity for, you know, the committee to see who they want to select for, you know, Tokyo. Mm. Kind of, you know, kind of like exposure you know, it, for Tokyo. It, it, can, you, can you even talk about that a little bit too? Because um, my son actually had an opportunity, but he got injured to do mm-hmm. three on three. A lot of people don't even know that three on three is going to be a part of the Olympics the this Olympics. year. Like that is huge for a lot of athletes. It's huge. So 2016, I did three on three for USA and I played three on three with USA 2011. We played in 2011. One of our athletes, she tore her ACL. The other one fractured her foot at the tournament. Mm. We played two on four for the rest of the tournament and made it to the semifinals and lost by two in overtime. No, you didn't. No, wow. no, you didn't. Wow. No, you did, no, you wow. did not. No, no, you did not. Two on four. And made it to the semifinals. Me and Kayla Davis. Damn. Kayla Davis, who I played with when I was a youngin, her father, Antonio Davis, we were on that same team in 2011. Hey, you, you know what that reminds me of? You know what that reminds me of? That's, that's, that's how you played back in the day. You put one up top and one down low. One down, one up. <laughs> right, right, right. That's it. That's how you do it. That's how you we know, did it. Lene, I, I, I do want to change the topic, but I want to keep it in the WNBA because this is something that I just think we, we, we need to address. And obviously, you know, it's the, it's the culture of the WNBA, you being in there. And, and of course, we want to talk about the business aspect too, but the culture of the WNBA, what do you think 
the women's game, why do you think the women's game hasn't quite caught on like the men's game? That's a good question. Um, let me see. And, and um, we, when we know that it's not just one thing, mm-hmm. but I'm, you know, it's it's a a lot of congruent parts that plays a role in it not being that successful the way it should be. I think the biggest thing is I'm trying to find the right word. Whatever word you use, it works. Yeah. I think the the word I'm I'm trying to use is like it's either like a realization or a fact. So the fact is we are not, you know, men. We aren't as fast as athletic, you know, we can't do all the fancy dunks. And I think that's why so many people compare our games. It's like, oh well, you know, it's not as exciting. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, is dunking, you know, the only reason why basketball is exciting? You know, what about the toughness? Right. You know, we got players that can shoot as deep as Steph Curry. We have players who can mm-hmm. handle like Derrick Rose and, and, and Kyrie. We got players who can block like Kevin Garnett, you know, mm-hmm. but it's we're not genetically and physically made like men. But it's like just accepting mm-hmm you know, what we have and how special it is and being able to watch the game and have fun with it from a different way. You know, we're just more so fundamental. Now you have players who's dunking now, you know, and, you know, who's doing more things, but, you know, you have so many young girls who wants to get to the WNBA, you know, but yep. it's getting even harder now because it's only 12 teams. At one point they had 15, you know, was that 2002? Something like that. I don't know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. had 15 teams. When I was a kid growing up, I was going to the Sky Games at All State Arena. I even have a picture of when I was a kid in a Sky jersey at a game. You know, and so oh. now I'm here and it's tough to see that we're, you know, going through this, but I, I think we're on the right path. And I think it just takes time. You know, if you look at one point, you know, women couldn't vote. You know, years later, you know, we're voting, you know, and there was never a vice president, you know, as a woman. We have that now. You know, there was never a first lady, you know, to a president. We have that now, you know, even in Chicago. I can tell you, I don't like the I don't like the WNBA stuff where they only carry 12 players. Like, why you can't carry 15? Well, then uh, somebody will say, well, they don't have enough money to pay to. The 15. But well, why not? What are you talking about? Like, how can we do this is the greatest country in, in, in the world? How we don't how we don't have enough money to pay three most people? I don't understand how like and I don't know, like the NBA, you know, it's like, why not help us? Yeah, well, like what a part little they bit? play? You know, like some teams in the W you have um you have Indiana, you have LA Sparks, uh, you have Minnesota their teams are joint with the NBA teams, you know, but you have some teams Mm. that, you know, Chicago Sky isn't with Chicago Bulls, but I think it would be just a little better if we had a little bit more support from the NBA because it starts somewhere, you know, we can't do it on our own, you know? Yeah. You know what? You just, you just um, helped a lot of our audience with that because I think most times the audience think that, the WNBA and the NBA, that they are co-franchises. Like, I didn't know yep. that the sky was not connected with uh, it, the Bulls. The but Bulls. Yet, the Bulls got a G League team, you know, with the, right. with the City Bulls, but they can't have a WNBA team in Chicago sky. That that doesn't make any sense. Come on, Jerry, fix that thing. Make that happen. And yeah. then people think like, oh, we want to make millions like, the guys in the NBA. It's not what we're asking for. We're just saying, like, look, we're playing just as hard, if not harder than some of the guys in the NBA. We have to play 32 games in a season, you know, traveling every few days. In the summer. In the summer. Now we have to go travel for eight months away from our family, our friends, our loved ones to play ball when mm. that money isn't even guaranteed. You know? Mm. Or you're losing your job. You know? So it's like, we just want to have you know the opportunity to make a salary that we're worth you know as athletes That's we right. work hard every day you know and going to practices and trying That's to do right. homework and, and balance everything and you know it's tough pay me 
Maybe. Pay me what I'm worth, baby. I'm glad you brought that up because my other question for you is, you know, and you're talking about job security and things of that nature. What happens when a WNBA player, WNBA player decides that I want to have a family, but I still want to play? What is that right. like for a WNBA player? I mean, I'm sure you've met and talked with some other players that had to deal with that. What was their experience like? You know, some athletes, you know, they, they just go on and they have their baby. And then, you know, prayerfully, some may have an opportunity where they can go back to that team the following year. But, you know, mm -hmm. it's tough. And I even know some players that went overseas pregnant, maybe a month pregnant. Wow and played until they can get a few checks until obviously it was time to go back just to get the money so they mm. can take care of their baby, you know, and, and, and provide for it. Wow. I, and I wonder, I wonder how long, if you, if you're, if you're a basketball player and you're a woman and if you are pregnant, like what, what, I wonder what the doctor would say, like, well, you can play up until the baby is, you know what, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like what you think about, I know we ain't no Dr. Will, but what you think? I mean, I definitely, if my daughter. I played one on the podcast though. <laughs> 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 he said I played one on the podcast. You silly. I think a few months is, is like maybe three or months. four months is when you can. Now, when I was in Israel, one of the girls playing overseas, she was pregnant and showing. Like I was guarding her and I couldn't focus wow. because I'm like, I just really don't want to, you Damn. know, I just don't want to touch you because, you you know, you have a baby. Right. And she gave us like Ugh. 25. <laughs> she gave us 25. <laughs> I, would, I, I don't know if I would have told that story. <laughs> she gave, she gave I know that baby inside that stomach like, you doing, mama. Right. <laughs> she was six and a half months pregnant. <laughs> okay. But you know what? That just shows how strong we are. You know, we Absolutely. can yeah. endure, you know, so, so much. But it's kind of the same way, just what you guys endured in Chicago. You know, everything that you guys went through, you know, with Hoop Dreams, I think yeah. it's tough. You know, it's every athlete, you know, go through the same thing. You know, you know, injuries and opportunities and different coaches. And how do you, you know, separate yourself? You know, how do you make that hump when everything is just knocking you down? And that's and that's what we're trying to ask you. We're, we're, we're trying to ask you about that culture because, I mean, what's interesting is is that the women's women's sports in general is doing phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's soccer, soccer, change. Yeah, you know, but the women are getting paid less than the men, even though they are attracting more viewership than men's in men's soccer. You look yeah. at tennis. I mean, what you know with what Venus Arena did, and then we, you move it closer to what Coco's doing now and all the oh, other yeah. great young tennis players. But yet the men still are getting more money. But when you look at, you know, the stands, there's more women in the stands. What what do you think is, is contributing to the mindset that just won't change? You know what? That's a really good question. I don't, I, I really don't know. You know, it's like when you, Play college basketball. We sold out every night at Kentucky. Mm. Eight to ten thousand fans. You go to Tennessee, they got twelve thousand fans. You go to Mississippi State, you know, you play at UConn. So it's like you have and the majority of our fans were elderly people. You know, so it's like mm -hmm. okay. So now you get to the league and it's like, well, where are the fans at? You know, and so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was having a conversation with my one of my best friends and I personally think that it's the timing because we are women, I think it's the timing of when our season is. You know, so it's the summertime, it's hot outside, it's a Friday night, and it's a game at 7 p.m. But you mm. got people wanting to go out. You got people wanting yep. to go to the club and have kickbacks and parties and whatever that is. So I don't know. It's not really another time to have the season because you got baseball, you got football, you got basketball. But it's like that's the only reason why I think that the fans are kind of up and down, maybe because it is the summer. That's the only thing I can mm. I can honestly think of. It's just like why why not come to a game? The tickets you pay five thousand, ten thousand dollars for a hundred level seat, you know, to go see the Bulls mm -hmm. play. But then our tickets is about thirty dollars 
And they're like, Ooh, $30. I don't want to go see them. You know, so it's just like we, you know, we have a mm-hmm. passion too. We have goals, but I think yeah. we're going in the right direction. If people don't understand that this is the, yeah. the league's 25th year anniversary. I don't know how long the NBA has been out, but it's been out at least since the 70s. From my knowledge, mm-hmm. right? At least I think seven. they just celebrated 70, is it 75 years? I think they yeah. just celebrated 75, 75 years. years. So it's a big gap. You know, what the players are making yeah. now in the NBA, the Steph Curry's and the LeBron's, MJ wasn't making that much, you know, back then because they, right. you know, they didn't have that much money, but it's just all about the progress. You know, you look at Scottie Pippen, you know, they tried to lowball him. Yo, have you ever seen the, uh, Cheryl Miller documentary? No. I've Trojan never War? It. Never seen it. Yeah, it's amazing. You see, uh, hey, you think you think our documentary nice? I'm going to watch that. Because she got hurt, right? Her knee? Yeah, she got hurt. She got all of that. Okay. Cynthia Cooper was playing with her. Yeah, she played with yeah. some She played with some talent. The McGee twins. The McGee, the, the McGee twins. Uh, the big boy, that's his mama. Oh, uh, JaVale McGee mom? JaVale mm-hmm. McGee, all them played together at USC together. Oh, you got to watch it, man. That I'm going to watch that tonight. You're going to be like, oh, shit, I know I was tough for a reason. Shit. That's right. That's <laughs> yeah, right. I know I posted it. I know you, what? Yeah. I got, I got, we got to ask you this too, because um, we've taken up so much of your time, but I, but we got, I want to address oh, this. I'm good. Um, the WNBA. Former player Candace Wiggins in 2017 said that, you know, she retired because the culture was harmful and toxic to her. And, you know, she alleged that, you know, she was being bullied uh, throughout her career. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you think there's any merit to her statements? I, I would have to disagree with her statement. You know, so when that statement came out, I was still in college. I'm seeing them I'm like, mm-hmm. is that really how it is? Like, and then I get an opportunity right. to be in the league, and I've never been bullied or harassed. I've never seen anybody else, right. you know, get bullied or harassed. But um, right. I think that's just more so of a narrative. But in my opinion, if we are women and we're already fighting for such a big cause, why try to divide that? Regardless of, you know, mm-hmm. how you feel. And if that is what she went through, you know, I'm sorry that she had to experience that. But right. you know, out of all the players to play in the league, you know, to have one player confess that, you know, it is kind of shocking. But, you know, nevertheless, you know, you can't lowball somebody's, his, you know, opportunity in her experience. But right. I would have to disagree. I've never been bullied. Mm-hmm. I've never seen... You know, in a pros and you're in college, you have team meals, you have team bond, you have all the stuff to do. In the pros, they give you your schedule, and that's the time you got to be right. there. After that, it ain't no team meals. It ain't no we meeting up together. <laughs> it's just you got to right. be where you got to be on together. time. And if you ain't on time, you're going to get that that fine in the mail that's going to say, mm. oh, you're going to be right. the right. Go ahead and- what would they? What would they find you? How much would they find you? I've never got fined. So I have no idea. I've never been fine before. So we, I love, you said, I was on time. my money. Got, she's like, I'm keeping my money. money. Right? I need she's a like, money. She's like, I am not donating nothing on that level. <laughs> nothing. That's I need crazy. all my, my, you know. And so my 2019, when I got cut, I'm like, I got to figure out, I got to start thinking of other things that I can do. You know, in my mind, yes. I plan to play basketball for another 10 years. No matter how many times mm. I get cut from the W, I'm going to still try. You know, you have players mm. in the league that got cut for five years straight, seven years straight, and now they're, you know, up there making a match. And I think that mm-hmm. I still have that opportunity. You know, I feel like I know I'm young. I've had some experience, but I think anything can happen for me. You know, one minute I'm cut, the next minute, you know, I'm locked in on the roster. Exactly. So, How you handle it? Character wise and positive, you got to take everything as an opportunity. And when you go through that opportunity, whatever, whatever, you got to be cool with whatever result come out of that. Any and result. it cannot affect you going forward. Nope. You know what I'm saying? That's how my, my mom asked me when I just got home. And she was like, 
you sure you okay? Like, I just want to make sure you're okay mentally. And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. He's like, why are you so calm? I said, I've been down this road now since 2018. I'm at mm-hmm. peace now. Yeah. You know, some situations yeah. are out of my control. But somebody said something to me and it stuck with me. He said, at this point in your career, you have nothing to prove to anybody. And so for a long time, I'm like, I got to get to the league. I got to prove to my family and my friends and whoever that I can make it to the league. He was like, you mm-hmm. have nothing to prove. He said, you, you, you've done everything that you can. He said, at this point, you have to live for yourself and prove to yourself how good you so. are at whatever level you want to be at mentally. So now I've been cool. You know, I've been working out every day, staying in the gym, you know, doing some work with my non for profit, which I, you know, which I love doing. Um, and I'm mm-hmm. cool. I'm cool mentally. You know, I'm talk okay. to us a little bit That's about awesome. your non for profit because we definitely want to. Yeah. Get that out there. Talk to us a little about your non for profit and what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So 2018, I was like, okay, um, I'm in a league, but I didn't see too many players actually from Chicago that made it to the pro level to come back to their hometown and really do something, men and women. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm like, I need to do something. Regardless of how far I make it, I need to do something. So 2018, I went back to my grammar school. And five other schools across the city, and we gave out 500 book bags. 2019, I said, well, let's make it, you know, legal. And so it was called That Harper Kid Not for Profit. And um, every year, you know, we'll have an annual back to school event. You know, so this year is going to be in August. We're doing 500 book bags. Um, we're going to have what? CPS there. We're going to have Blue Cross Blue Shield. Last year, we did. Um, they got free health kits, and we gave out free food for the first 250 people. It was at Kenwood High School, mm. and each year we're going to build upon it. And then so now adding to the back to school this year, I really want to celebrate young girls. And so mm. I'm going to do, I want to put together like some type of panel, you know, to talk about uh, just being an athlete, you know, as a young girl and as a mm-hmm. woman, talking about the importance of mental health having a youth clinic and a yoga session for the girls um, there too. And I created this guidebook. It's called Win the Day. And the guidebook is pretty mm-hmm. much the foundation of the non for profit So everything that we do, it's us educating young girls and young women how to win each day through education, sports, and health. Each year we're going to build upon, you know, with so many things that I want to do, but that's the biggest thing is that we have our annual back to school every year in August. So how can people, if they want to get involved, they want to find out more information. Where, where can they go? I look at the players like Jewel Lloyds. I look up to her. She's amazing. You know, you got Kathy Pondex, you got Candace Park, you got Tamika mm-hmm. Ketchum. All those players, Morgan Tuck, they're from Illinois. You know, they're just mm-hmm. from that area. You know, Candace is from Naperville. Morgan Tuck is from Bolingbrook. Jewel Lloyd is from the Naperville area. Kathy mm-hmm. wasn't born in Chicago, but she went to Marshall. Shout out to Marshall, you know, Dorothy Gators. Yes, she is. But, <laughs> you know, I'm pretty much the only athlete that made it to the W from Chicago, from the like, southeast side of Chicago, from, from the hood. You know, and so yep. for me, it's like, I'm here now. I'm still grinding out, but I got to go back to my community and let them know, like, you might be from the west side or the south side, but you can get to right where I'm at or even further, you know, just being in the same area, you know. So my Instagram is that underscore Harper Kid, and in my bio, it has my non-for-profit. Well, we're going to wrap it up with this last question, Lene, and it's going to go like this. Uh-oh. Because you're still actively, because you're still actively wait, you know, still playing, and you're only 26. My God, <laughs> I wish I was that young. 26 years old, Will. She, she, we talking about what's her next? Yeah. Uh. So it's like this. So you did out of all your accomplishments and everything, right now today, Lene sitting at, at home in Chicago, about to go to Massachusetts tomorrow. Can you give us Lene's next Hoop Dreams chapter look like? Hmm. That's a really good question. Y'all, y'all hitting me with some heat. The next chapter 
right now is trying to see how can I put this. Can you see ten years from now where you want the THT the THT Foundation to be at, and you doing it? You know, like digging that dog back out. When I was in high school, I was a dog on a court. <laughs> Life hits you. You know, you get to college, you go through uh-huh. ups and downs, and I lost a lot of my confidence in college, mm. and I'm starting to get it back. And yeah. so my focus, my goal right now for these next few months is just getting that dog back mentally. I know physically mentally. it ain't going nowhere, you know, but mentally just having that, that mindset that no matter where I'm at, I'm killing mm-hmm. whoever is in the gym. You know, I'm going to play go. my game. I'm giving everything. Get that high back. school. Get that high school mentality back. That's where I'm at right now. That's what I'm working on. Getting that back. Getting that dog back. That long, the that- I'm the gold of my era. I've been a trending topic. I'm as fly as a feather. My pocket's macroscopic. See, with time, I get better. I'm always in the action, kid. Know I got it locked from Chicago where the toughest live. Concrete jungle, earn my stripes on the pavement there. You make it here, then you can make it anywhere. No comparison. Your game is embarrassing. No one can touch me. I'm all for going there again. Yeah, I think I'm balling like I'm Will Gates. I'm hoop dreaming, trying to fight against a sealed fate. More faith, think I'm balling like I'm Martha A.G. I'm box office in one day, they gon' have to pay me. Yeah, I think I'm balling like I'm Will Gates. I'm hoop dreaming, trying to fight against a sealed fate. More faith, think I'm balling like I'm Martha A.G. I'm box office in one day. Hoop Dreams, the podcast, an Unlearning Network production. Written and produced by Arthur A.G., Will Gates, Matt Hoffer, and Chantel Shan with audio engineering by Matt Savage. For more episodes, check us out at www.unlearningnetwork.com. The money get us. Gotta be a dog to survive in this cold weather. Ice in my veins, no need for a warm sweater. I'm coming for it all, best believe I won't let up, yeah. Hey, I think I'm balling like I'm Will Gates. I'm hoop dreaming, trying to fight against a sealed fate. More faith, think I'm balling like I'm Martha Agee. I'm box office in one day, they gon' have to pay me. Yeah, I think I'm balling like I'm Will Gates. I'm hoop dreaming, trying to fight against a sealed fate. More faith, think I'm balling like I'm Martha Agee. I'm box office in one day, they gon' have to pay me.